All right, hello, all of you children's literature students out there. This is our video that is the summary and instructions for week three coming up this week, week three. Uh, I'm going to click around in the screen and show you the modules and maybe just leave myself down in the corner here if it doesn't get in the way. Okay, so starting tomorrow, which will be Monday the 14th, we're calling that week three. So as you can see on the screen here, this is all not green yet, but it will be tomorrow morning for you guys. I um, will publish all this at once. So let's talk for a minute first about the timing of your weeks and kind of the rhythm you should be seeing. I can't remember if I talked about this in the last video, but I'm going to go over it again. So um, each week you're seeing your reading right here this week. We'll click on that in a minute. Uh, you're seeing your traditional literature uh, or your tales, something like that. Last week we did Aesop's Fables. This week it's an African folktale. Then starting now, week three, you'll have a new blog post that is connected to one of the genres. If you'll remember, the genres are all listed in Appendix A in the syllabus. So if you want to know how many, what level, what amount of pages, what style of book you need to be reading for each genre, go to that appendix, find that out, and then come back to your current week and see what it is you're supposed to do on your blog for that. And then there's going to be this check-in quiz for your blog, which all that is is me saying you are going to go into the quiz and say to me, yes, I made my blog, yes, it has this, 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 this. It'll be kind of a little checklist, but in a quiz style so that Canvas can tell me at a glance whether you got through that or not. Obviously, this is the honor system, although I am going into WordPress and reading your blogs. I just can't grade you from WordPress. So um, every once in a while, instead of a quiz, you'll have a place to put a link to your current blog post because I can open those simultaneous in Canvas and also be in a grading screen. But as you'll see when we get to the rubric for the blog post, that I'm grading this at the end of the quarter, not as we move through the quarter. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, so let's start with the reading. This week's reading. Click on that, it'll give you a summary. It's also in the syllabus. Okay, so from your ECL text, that's this one. You're reading chapter 12, very important. Um, I know it's jumping around, but we need the background knowledge that's gonna come out of chapter 12 so that we can move forward in our quarter here. Let me get to the first part of the chapter. Oh, look at that, I had a bookmark there. Okay, literature for a diverse society. So this is kind of the multicultural chapter. Obviously, that's what this week's about. Um, there are some really good book lists in here if you're not sure about your books. Um, and interesting little side note about multicultural lit, it is not um, an old genre. It has not been around long. Really, in the 1980s, uh, publishers got uh, kind of specific and intentional about multicultural children's lit. But it, I'm old enough to remember when it kind of became a big thing. So um, anyways, there's some interesting stuff in here. I mean, the history of the ancient things from international literature are here. But I'm talking about American publishers publishing books for children that um, specifically and intentionally addressed other cultures. That, that was like, I can't even remember those days. I'm not that old. So anyways, okay, that's that chapter um, from your Notebook Connections book. That's this one. You're on chapter four. Um, and then there's an article in here, Exploring Names and Identity. It's really interesting. So uh, there's not a quiz on the reading in Canvas yet for this week. I may not do that this week because I'm uh, anticipating a lot of questions as we do our first blog post. So I thought maybe we not do a quiz this week so we can focus on those blog posts and then we'll get into the better routine with a quiz and a traditional tale uh, item and your blog post each week but this week i think we might take a break from the quizzes okay so now i'm going to go back to my module that's the reading okay now whoops not on week one scrolling down to week three 
Okay, so this week's traditional tale, traditional literature piece is an African folk tale. It's this, this is like, I love this site. I love this uh, poet, author, illustrator that he is. Wait till you watch this video. I mean, it is fantastic. I, I, I love this. I'm probably gonna show this in other classes, whether it applies or not, because it is just so amazing. So I'm super excited for you guys to get to watch this. I'm a little worried about it coming up in week three because I'll probably not ever beat it. Like the next ones are just not gonna measure up after this, but still, it's so good. So you're gonna do that. And then you'll go back to your slideshow that you started last week. And you will add a slide for African folktales. So you'll need to um, find your own African folktale. And I don't care if you find it with an author reading it to you or a Kindle book or a library book or whatever, but find an African folktale and do a slide for your PowerPoint. So the same PowerPoint. You're not starting a new slideshow. This is the slideshow we started in week two. Oh, and I put a sample up. I hope all of you saw the announcement. See, here it is right at the bottom of week two. So it has like an intro slide, and then it has the slide from last week about Aesop. And now you'll make another slide for the African folktale. So as we move through our weeks, we're adding to the same slideshow. And at the end of the quarter, you will each have a slideshow with multiple slides about different cultures and their literature. Okay. This week, we're starting the real blog. It's not just get to know you anymore. This is the content, your first real content post. So when you click on this assignment, it's a really busy assignment here. See all this text? So first thing I want you to do is I want you to print these instructions. This will help you be in WordPress and not flipping back and forth all the time. So these are some instructions about making your blog, your reader's notebook blog. Um, remember that this is indeed the reader's notebook assignment like this course requires on campus. We're just doing it in a digital version. So. Um, if you are a little confused when you see the terms reader's notebook, when you see the term blog, I'm using them kind of interchangeably because we're just using the blog as the vehicle to accomplish the reader's notebook assignment. So this one here is the rubric. That's the printable rubric. Um, it's right here. It actually is not gonna get applied to your blog until the end. Like this is gonna get one big grade at the end. So um, read through it, it gives the instructions. The rubric has more than just what you're gonna get graded on, it has instructions of what to include in your blog. So it um, tells you about the books that you need to read, you need to list all the books in your blog post for this week that you've read. According to Appendix A, you know how many you should have read. Um, oh, actually, multicultural picture books, I didn't give you a number because it's picture books and I wanted you to read as many as you could find and like, and if I say four, you're only gonna read four, and if I say 10, you're only gonna read 10, and maybe some of you will read eight, and some of you will read 20, and some of you will read seven, but um, you, you police yourself on the quantity here for your multicultural picture books only. All of the other genres have quantities listed in the Appendix A of your syllabus. Okay, so you've read your books, so in your blog post you have to tell me about the books, the illustrator date of publishing, um, it can be done with a graphic or a bullet point, so make it look interesting because it is a blog, but don't just copy and paste a photo of the book cover. It, it can be there also, but not only. It, that does not suffice you telling me the publisher, the author, all of that. I don't want to read it off your graphic, but your graphic can be there to complement your information. Okay, then you review your books. So it says list the books you've read. And you see that these instructions right here on the screen are similar to what is on the rubric, uh, but a little different wording maybe just because I typed them at different times. Okay, so then you review the book or the books, a couple of paragraphs. I mean, there's some real specific information here on the rubric. Okay, now the part that you guys are going to get confused about, I'm thinking, are the classroom connections and the reader's responses. So using your your, your rubric, this really is better instructions than what's on the screen here. The screen gets you started, but you really need the rubric also. All right, classroom construction uh, connections, at least one way to incorporate one of your chosen books into a classroom activity or a lesson. No worksheets. I don't want to see little matchings or word finds or anything that involves a piece of paper and a pencil that is already done for the kids and they're filling it out. I want engaging activities 
student-centered, it can be integrating the arts, it can be a whole group chart creation, you know, anchor chart, literacy type lessons, uh, but it needs to be student-centered, not teacher talking and not worksheet busy work, seat work kind of activity, okay? So that's the classroom connection. And then there's the reader's response. So the reader's response is where you would ask your students to do one of the notebooking activities, maybe from here, unless you have another one you'd prefer to use, you can just choose one right out of here. And in your blog post somewhere, you're gonna say, you know, with my class, I can see myself doing this activity ABC as our reader's response activity. And that's gonna be a, that is gonna be an individual activity for your students and kind of a personal thing. Maybe you have a notebook journal. I don't know, be creative however you wanna put this in your blog post. But, but I highly suggest you use some of these. You should learn some of these anyways because they're kind of interesting and they pertain to any book and any level of reader because they're a personal response to what they've read. So there's some great ideas in here. Okay, then the last couple things on the rubric are the um, professionalism and creativity of your blog and then your engagement at the end of the quarter. I'm gonna be judging or judging, <laughs> well judging I guess, just grading your engagement in this project based on your um, the thoroughness of your blog post and also on your interaction with your peers as far as uh, replying to their blogs after you've read them, you know how you can add a reply or a response. So I wanna see some engagement with each other through the blog format. That's what those bottom 15 points are about. Okay, so that's the big part of that. And I know there's probably gonna be some questions. So at the end of my video here, I will, well, tomorrow, I mean, when I, okay, sorry. When I publish this module, there will also be a discussion. If you see my screen right now, there is not a discussion board in module three. There will be when I publish because it's going to be the place for questions about module three. So what happens in an online class is I get emails asking the same question and I, that seems silly. When we do it in discussion board, one person can ask the question, I can type the answer, and then as the next 20 people have the same question, they can go check the discussion board. If your question hasn't been asked and answered, then you type it into the discussion board. Uh, if you know the answer to something that pops up on the discussion board, feel free to chime in or give ideas about what you've done. Okay, so let's review. We have Appendix A, which has your genres, which this week is multicultural, and it's there's no page, no book number, quantity, no page number. Uh, that was up to you. I left that open-ended. Okay, and then you have your uh, rubric for your reader's notebook, and then there is the other link, your reader's notebook blog. There I am using those words interchangeably. I hope you guys are all up to speed on the language of this class. And then in the module under the blog assignment, which has a to-do right here, um, a to-do date, even though the whole blog isn't due until the end, you won't see a grade. This is just a to-do date to get this post done and keep you up to speed. So you'll also notice that on the reading and like on this video when I, when I publish this week three summary, it's also gonna have a due date. There's nothing to turn in. I'm just putting due dates on items so they show up in your to-do screen over on the side of Canvas. That's why I'm doing that. I hope it's not messing any of you up too terribly. Okay, so I'm looking over my notes. Oops, we don't wanna look at week 10 yet. Um, back up in week two, I hope you all got started on that library field trip. Um, your slideshows are started. I had several questions about that, but I think we're okay there now. Um, I feel like we're moving along here. I don't see any big issues or any glitches. I didn't have a whole bunch of emails about things that didn't make sense. Just a few. We got those sorted out. Uh, the Google Doc with everybody's blog is well populated now, so print that out and follow those blogs. Follow each other. I still have to do that because I have this huge list now to follow. I think that's it. So uh, I will see you all on the discussion board for questions about this week, or you can email me. I'm also open to having a live conference if anybody needs to like talk to me or we can do FaceTime or um, Skype or something like that. And I am running out of time. I only get 15 minutes on these videos for the free version of this screencaster. So I better sign off and I will see you online. Have a good week. Bye-bye.